Hey everyone and welcome back and in this video it's going to be a little bit different we're going to talk about game structure and this is an important thing to think about when you start building a game mainly because if you start a game not really sure where the game's going to go it'll slow down your development time your code will be messy and it will make the end user um, you'll put them in a difficult position because they may or may not enjoy what you're putting out so it's very important to kind of at least have a rough idea of what you're doing in the long term what your end product is going to be before you start coding otherwise you will end up confusing yourself and everybody else and confused users will eventually get bored and go on to, to other things so the first thing that you want to decide is whether you're going to tell a linear story or whether your players are going to have multiple options multiple endings or whether you're going to go completely all out and make it more of a sandbox game and I've, got, I've done some little diagrams some r amazing technical diagrams I hope you appreciate the amount of effort that I put into them boom <laughs> so this is obviously a diagram that demonstrates a very very basic linear story and that um, particularly in the RemPy um, this is a great medium to tell this kind of story and you simply go from start to finish um, you know very limited player choices um, you know you're telling a story you're not really giving the user much control over the events of the story um, this there's a lot of adult games like this as well that really are just start to finish um, kind of games like that. Now there is a second kind of linear game that gives you the illusion of not being linear because it gives you options. Um, now games that fall into this category off the top of my head, particularly in the adult world, are games like Big Brother, um, where you've got a start and a finish. You might get to make one or two decisions along the way, but ultimately the game follows a linear path. Um, you know, you're you, you're given the impression that you have more control over events than you really do um, you know because you can make very minor changes but ultimately the game will go from start to finish and again there's, there's nothing wrong with telling a story like this but this is one of those decisions that you need to make very early on in game development so that you know whether you're going to need to code and do a lot of extra renders so for example we're going on to the next version this is a non-linear game or rather it's only semi-linear in as much as the game starts the player makes a choice and it can go one of two ways and then perhaps a bit further on they can make another choice a bit further on and so on and so forth so for every choice that you make in the game you have to make two endings uh, so you know in this case the player gets to make two choices choice choice get two optional finishes there and so on and so forth so this is it's i wouldn't call it a a completely open game because you still ultimately you have to go to this first event then you make a choice then you have to go to this event then you make another choice and then you have to go to the next event and so on and so forth so the game continues along a controlled path but you do get multiple choices now this is one of the more common kind of uh, family trees for want of a way of putting it that people want to try and make it's just that it's a great deal of work because you know there's a, a lot of renders for every decision that you make in game you have to do renders for every outcome you have to do code for every outcome so that's a lot of work bearing in mind that if you want to keep the player engaged you need to give them hours and hours worth of gameplay with many many choices so ultimately you may be looking at having to do thousands of renders just to tell the story and the last option, which I haven't done a diagram for because it would be a complete mess, is the sandbox game where literally there are events connected to each other, but it's kind of a whole spider's web where if you make choice A before you make choice B, you end up with you know different outcomes and then you own, certain choices only open up if you can, if you make other decisions. You know, that's a that's a whole imagine the diagram that you'd have to draw for that it, it would look crazy so it's 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 you know very complicated and ultimately ironically that's the kind of thing that i'm trying to do with my current game deeper is that i'm looking at giving the player as much choice as humanly possible but obviously that makes it a big challenge to code and a lot of renders to do as well so you know it's a big project big big project so looking at the code that we 
created over the last few tutorials. This is the, the code for the clock that we had in the last um, in the last video. We're going to delete that now because we don't need that anymore. We don't really need any of these anymore either. So ultimately what we start off with with Rempire is an empty script file. We can define our images and our characters at the beginning of it or we can put those into a separate file. And this is something that I haven't touched on yet, but I will talk about now, is that RenPy will take as many files that end RPY as you want to put into your game, it will take. So if you wanted to create a separate file for every event that happens with a specific character, or every event that happens in a specific location, um, or if you just wanted to break down your code into chapters, if you're telling a linear story, you can do it. And it's as simple as even in um, any text editor that you're using, or even in File Manager, you simply can just right click on there and you can create a new file. And we're just going to call this um, events.rpy. Now it's very important that you type in, and we're going to get rid of the capital E, uh, it's very important that you type in the RPY at the end so that RenPy knows that it's a RenPy file and that it, that it needs to include it. And what RenPy does is basically takes all of the files that you create and it turns them into one file. It compiles them as a single file. So it really is irrelevant how many files that you have. And if you wanted to, you could even create a new folder and call it scripts. And you could put your new events.rpy into the scripts folder to keep it away from the, the main file, the original files, for example. And then if you really wanted to, you could go in and let's just say we'll call this label game loop return. And then you could literally just say to in the script file, call the variables code block and then jump to game loop so literally this file has nothing else to do with the game now you start it calls the variable declarations then it goes straight to the game loop it goes here so you can put all your game code in here so that it's in a separate file so that you don't need to play around with script rpy at all if you didn't want to which is quite a useful thing to do um, because again it helps you break up your code a little bit more um, to make life a bit simpler so if you were if you were creating a linear game, you wouldn't really have a loop. You just have event one, event two, event three. You know, you just pr program in your script, your sequence of events in a nice linear fashion. If you were coding a game with a few different options, you'd have like event one followed by choice one. If choice one equals true then we could say jump to event 1b and then we could create a this is pseudo code this will not work if i ran it by the way just to be very clear event 1b and then you could have another 1c for example there and then you could say if choice 1 equals false jump to the event 1c and so on and then you'd have to obviously create a new um, code block for each outcome of each decision so as you can see this is this is only pseudo code and already it's starting to look a bit complicated um, you know just by having a single choice in our stream of events um, so it's it's very, as you can see, it's imperative that we make a decision about the kind of structure of our game before we start typing out lines and lines of code, because otherwise things get very jumbled very quickly and we end up getting ourselves into a right old state, which we don't want to do because, you know, game development is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. A lot of people try it and because Rempi gives you the power to create a game with, I would say, minimal coding knowledge. Uh, you'll find that uh, a lot of kind of game forums, a lot of indie forums are absolutely rammed with unfinished games that people have started to try and make a fast buck on Patreon or whatever their crowdfunding um, source is. 
and then they never finish because they get halfway through or they get a, you know a few months in realize that it's actually quite a lot of work and then they bail um, which obviously upsets a lot of people because people invest money in these and this sort of thing. So again, very important to make the choices about the way the game is going to be structured and to have a clue about how difficult it really is to do these things before you get started because you don't want to get halfway through you know developing a game and then bail out at the last minute because you know you've realized that you've taken you've bitten off more than you can chew. I think everybody's got a story in them that they need to tell, that they want to tell. It's just providing yourself with a good platform, a good base to do it. So, yeah, I think that concludes this video. Um, I hope that gave you something to think about, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one. See you soon. Bye-bye.